Hello Wizards, today I'm going to show you how to get the most out of your GTO Wizard subscription by mastering the Solution Browser. The purpose of today's video is to teach you guys how to study more effectively. We're going to cut through the noise and learn how to analyze GTO solutions effectively. We're going to master the tools and cover some tips and tricks you can use to get the most out of the Solution Browser. The first half of this video will focus on actually mastering the features in GTO Wizard's Solution Browser. There's a lot of really cool and niche features that I don't think a lot of people are utilizing that they really should be. The second half of this video is going to teach you some tips and tricks for studying GTO solutions more effectively. For example, we'll go over focusing on your range rather than your hand, how to uncover underlying principles, studying thresholds, looking beyond the strategy, clumping by hand class, analyzing your opponent's counters, and comparing the ranges. Chapter 1. Mastering the Solution Browser. It is imperative that you master your tools before you master your technique. So, the first half of this video is going to be a comprehensive guide of all the features in the Solution Browser that you may or may not be familiar with. Let's get started. To access the Solution Browser, press the Solutions button or select it from this menu at the top of the page. So, I'm going to start very basic so that everyone's included, and we're going to get to the more niche and complex features as we go along. A lot of players, they're using GTO Wizard, and it's their first time experiencing a solver, and it can feel overwhelming. So, first of all, let me explain what we're looking at here. This is our overall strategy. Each hand is color-coded according to its actions. So, for example, Ace-4 is red, and that corresponds to the fact that it's opening. 9-3 is blue, indicating that it's folding. Our overall range frequencies are shown here. So under the gun is opening these hands in red for a total of 17.6% of the time. So 17% of the range is opening and the rest is folding, right? And you can scroll through the positions to see how the strategy changes. So let's say under the gun folds, actions on hijack, fold, fold, and here's this button strategy. Maybe button opens. Fold, and here's big blind strategy. And now we see that they have some calls, some raises, some folds. So you can select any spot you want. You could go through flops, turns, rivers, whatever you like. Now there's a faster way to navigate this. And so for example, let's say we wanted to pick a button versus big blind spots. What a lot of people do is they'll click fold, 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 but you can just click button, one click, and big blind calls. And that's two clicks and you've selected this spot. Or alternatively, you can use this shortcut thing at the top left of the page, and maybe we want like a cutoff versus small blind three bet pot. You can do it that way as well, and just enter whatever board you'd like to see the strategy. So next, I wanna show you how to choose the right solution. Now, you need to click this thing in the top left of the page, and this is the solution selector. And this works a little differently depending on each of your formats. So, first of all, I'm on cash games right now. I've selected the classic cash game, so not anti plus straddle, and I've selected uh, six max. Firstly, we can filter by stack depth. And so, we can choose any stack depth. Starter users can access the 100 big line stack depths. Premium users have access to all of them. Next, you can choose your solution type. And if you're ever confused about what this means, just hover over these little question marks and it will explain it. So general solutions are versatile. They have GTO preferred sizes. They have more bet sizes. The simple solutions tend to have fewer bet sizes. They don't have, for example, any small blind limps or four bet shoves, 100 bigs deep. And so choose your size or choose your solution as you wish. Next, we have a number of different rake structures. So we have NL50 and NL500. And we also have these for GG which have preflop rake. The opening size corresponds to how big you open. So for example, GTO usually wants to open smaller from early position and bigger from late position. If you want to know why, go watch my range morphology video. But some people just want to open 2.5x from every position and that's fine. We have solutions for that as well. So select 2.5x if that's what you prefer. This does change the preflop strategies a bit, especially what calls. Uh, similarly, we can change the 3-bet sizes. So GTO often tends to 3-bet 
quite large, but the smaller free bet sizes are designed to mimic the population a bit more. So for example, cutoff opens, and small blind here is raising 10, whereas with the larger sizes, they're going to be raising like 11.5, big blinds raising 13. And so what you can do is you can just filter for the stuff you want. So I want 100 big blinds, uh, general solutions, NL50, with smaller 3-bet sizes, right? And so now it's showing me two solutions I can choose from. We can also pin this using this button and press up and down to go through what we've selected. And if we allow more things, it shows us more solutions. So a lot of people, they'll get confused, like, what is all this stuff? You can just press this show preview button and from here, you can see information about each of the spots. So here we've selected the NL Cash 50 general solutions, and we can see we have turn reports, we can see the rig structure, we can see the number of sizings, the accuracy, and this changes depending on what you select. Now, for MTT players, we've got a little bit of a different setup here. So MTT players can choose between heads up, chip EV, and ICM spots. So let's start with chip EV. First of all, if you check the top or the bottom right here, you can see which spots we have preflop and postflop solutions for. This solution was just added a few weeks ago, so right now it's preflop only. But if you select the 8-max solutions, you can see postflop spots as well. Here we can choose the effective stack depth, and we can either view it as a grid or a table that we can scroll through. Now, if you're picking ICM solutions, we have a lot of different preflop ICM solutions to choose from. At the top, we see the stack type, any, near, big, and far. And so the, oh, let me just move that over. So near indicates that most of the stacks are somewhat close to each other. Big stack indicates that one or two players have a really big stack compared to the rest of the table. So here under the gun has 160. And far indicates that it's more spread out. And this has some implications as to the ICM effects. Down here at the bottom, we can see that we can select different tournament phases. So right now we have final table and two table, but we plan on adding many tournament phases, including, uh, you know, the last 25% of the field and so on. So I recommend you check out this payouts button as that's going to explain the payout distribution among the final table here. So we have right now one final table and two final tables, and that's going to alter the payout structure. And you can choose how many players are remaining. So if we're at a final table with five players remaining, we can go and study that as well. You can sort by any one of these columns. So for example, if you're in the cutoff and you want to choose a specific size, you can sort and you can even scroll using the sidebar. Say we have 40 bigs and we want to find something close. To, so we can choose something close to our spot here. Spin and go players, similarly, they can choose between symmetric and asymmetric stack depth. Symmetric means that all the stacks have the same size and asymmetric meaning mix sizes. And again, you can view this either as a table or a grid. I think spin players usually prefer this grid view, a little easier to look at, especially if you're studying mixed stacks. We also have different types of solutions. So for example, the complex solutions contain a lot more bet sizes, and these are often used to determine how we should simplify into the general solutions. So with all that said, you should know that you can actually pop this out into a separate window. And for example, if you have another monitor, you could put this on another screen and quickly switch between solutions to compare and contrast them. So let's go back to cash games. I've shown you the basics of how to find solutions and how to navigate the tree. Let's get into some of the cool features now. So we'll say that hijack opens with this range. And action on big blind, they call with this range in green. Pick any flop you'd like. I'll select the random one for this video. Big blind checks. Action on hijack. And we can see this is a range bet spot. 
So let's select some bet size. We'll go half pot here. Action back on big blind. Okay, so again, we can see the overall strategy. We can see the overall frequencies in this table. So folding 57, calling these hands. If you click any one of these, you apply a filter. So here I'm filtering exactly for their folds. And that filter is shown up here. And you can either click off or just click the clear button. If you hover over any one of these hands, you can see their exact strategic breakdown. So king four here is raising sometimes. It's calling sometimes and it's folding sometimes. A hand like a6 maybe, basically just always calling, right? And like 9-5, just folding. So something else you can do is hover over specific actions to learn more about that range. So for example, what hands comprise the calling range? So there's a little icon above each of these actions. You see these little guys? These you can hover over to learn more about how that range is constructed. So I'm going to hover over this icon. And here we can see that Big Blind's calling range is primarily composed of top pair. Lots of ASEC. So when you bet half pot with hijack, just know that after one bet, at least half their stuff is top pair, right? You can also hover over the raises. So what type of value are they raising with? And we can see that most of their raises in this spot, they're just straights, just king jack. And so you can use this to identify the value thresholds, calling thresholds, what hands start folding, for example. So a lot of second pair, third pair starts folding. And so these are a good way to see the range construction. So, as I said, you can hover over any hand to see what's going on. We also have this summary tab. Now, the summary tab shows some interesting data, so we can see the strategy. You can also see, for example, how much of it is in our range. So, range indicates the weight. So, Jack-9, for example, only gets here 85% of the time, and that's because it's going to raise preflop sometimes. We can see the expected value of this hand in big blinds, the equity, so that's how often it would win if it were checked down, the equity realization, and the blocker score if you have premium. Hover over this icon to learn more about what each of these things mean. So what is a blocker score? What is EV? Well, you can learn it all here. Something else you can do is use this dropdown look at different types of data. So what is the actual expected value of different decisions? I'm going to select strategy plus EV. And here, for example, we can see that Jack-8 has the same EV raising and calling, which should be no surprise because it's mixing raises and calls. A hand like 9-6, though, for example, is just a minus EV call. The highest EV action is folding. And so it pure folds. You can look at different things, so strategy plus equity. And you can also just press 1 on your keyboard to go through this. So this is the expected value, equity, equity realization, blockers, and the overall range weights. You can also look at all of it at the same time. So for example, here we can see all of this stuff that we saw in the summary tab. Next, I want to show you uh, how you can customize the look and feel of GTO Wizard a bit. So perhaps you don't like these colors. Maybe you're a little colorblind. Maybe you just don't like the general vibe. It's fully customizable. Select your settings in the top right corner here and customize your colors to your heart content. So we have a lot of different themes you can pick from on the right here. So maybe you like this ice cold theme or maybe the homage theme. Maybe the, oh, the data pick a theme. That's a pretty popular one. Make it your own. Now you can also customize it yourself. So you can choose, for example, exactly what color a check should be, uh, the color gradient for like a medium bet or a large bet. You can change pretty much everything in here. What do your cards look like? What do the suits look like? What does the text and background look like? Make it your own, and you can even import and export themes among friends. Something else you can do is change the way the range is viewed. So for example, you can select range height or full height, now, full height just means that everything's rescaled to maximum. So, for example, A6 here, it looks like we have this hand in full, when in fact we only have it 19% of the time. And so, if you go to normalized, it rescales it, right? Uh, so, I prefer the normalized view, and I strongly suggest you use this too, because that way you won't be looking at a hand like King 6 
thinking it's impactful when in fact it's a very tiny part of the range, right? Something else that I really like, and you know what, I'm even going to switch to a two-tone board for this one, is this horizontal view. This one is one of my favorites. So horizontal view changes the way your range is displayed in the strategy matrix. And so each combination is displayed separately. So for example, we can immediately see these diamond draws inside calling. So 9-5, we see that there's one column, those are the diamonds, and the rest are folding. Similarly, we can see, for example, just at a glance that the king X and the queen X are only calling when they have this diamond here. So this one's really useful for boards where suits matter. Uh, the vertical view, I think, is better for rainbow boards, but choose what you like. Now, if you're ever confused about what all of this means, again, we have these little helper buttons, so just click help, and you can understand what's going on here. So next, I want to show you probably what is my favorite feature in GTO Wizard Solution Browser, and these are these filters. Oh, I absolutely love the filters. So the filters allow you to filter and highlight different hand classes in your range. So for example, if I hover over top pair, it highlights the top pair. And if I click this, it applies a hand class filter, I should say. And so now we see that these global frequencies are also updated. And so if I click two pair, for example, we can see that two pair is mostly calling and straights are mostly raising. You can also use these little arrow keys. So if I just click, for example, up, now I've selected all of the two pair and better. And if I click down, now I've only selected in between what I've clicked. And again, little filters come up here. So something you can do, for example, is click, let's say, a raise, and we're filtering for hands within this raise. Let's click both raises. And we can use these equity bucket filters. So equity buckets tell you how strong your hand is compared to your opponent's range. So what's the value portion of these check raises? Well, if I click the best hands, we can immediately see it's pocket tens, a bottom set, and straights. Okay, what is the bluff portion of these check raises? I'll select trash hands and maybe some weak hands. And we can see here it's a whole lot of jack X and king X, these gut shots, uh, particularly with a diamond indicating that we have also the flush draw, right? So another really useful feature of Wizard is the ability to group bet sizes together. For example, here we see that the solution is mixing between a half pot raise and a full pot raise. But what if we don't actually care about that distinction? Well, we have this ability to group actions together. So I'm gonna click simple, and here it mixes between raise, call, and fold. Now this doesn't actually change the solution, it just changes the way it's displayed. And so all of our raises are now bucketed together as one raise size. And this can be really helpful for spots where there's a lot of bet sizes and you want to simplify it. Now you can use this drop down or just press S. We also have this chart mode. This is kind of fun. You can see, for example, a graph of the betting frequencies. We've got the main ones and we also have these grouped sizes, right? Below this, we have another switch for the filters, and there's a difference between full length and range length. And so full length just displays each column to its fullest, whereas range length rescales it as to how many of these hands you actually have in range. So we have more two pair, therefore this bar is longer than this bar. And I like that because it gives me an idea of what proportion of hand classes are in my range, right? Another useful feature is the ability to toggle between big blinds, and percentage pot. You can just press the space bar to switch. You can even display both at the same time. Alternatively, you can change these in your settings under other. All right, that about wraps it up for the strategy tab, but there's a number of other tabs here I wanna show you. So let's move on to the ranges tab next. The ranges tab is super powerful. I really like this tab. So you'll probably see a screen like this. And first of all, we can compare both ranges at the same time. Now you can full screen it using this button or by pressing Q. And the main thing is that we can compare, for example, different hand classes. So we can highlight who has more straights or sets or two pair or top pair. 
We can also compare things like the expected value of both ranges or the equity of both ranges. And you can also copy the strategies at this point. So I can copy this to my clipboard and paste it into my favorite poker tools. Similarly, I could copy this one. And here it's Big Blind's action, so I can copy a specific node. So for example, I could copy just their calling range or just their folding range. In the center, we see combinations. That's the number of combinations in either player's range. On the left, big blind. On the right, hijack. And it's always out of position, in position. We see the expected value. So obviously, uh, <laughs> hijack has an advantage on this board, uh, especially after they bet. We can see the equity, the equity realization, as well as a breakdown below between the hand classes. Now you can compare equity buckets, hands, and draws. So equity buckets, for example, is how much equity you have against your opponent's range. We also have these finer equity buckets with more categories. And these are good for uh, getting a sense of the overall range and nut advantages, as well as the polarity of the spot. Hand classes are also quite fun. Clicking any one of these applies a filter. So for example, if I click a few of these, now I'm filtering for the top pair and two pair in both players' ranges. And there's a little thing at the very top, these little things in white here, so 33 and 21. This means that overall, 21% of big blinds range contains a two pair or a top pair, whereas 33% of hijacks range contains these hands. Again, we can just clear our filters here. Now below this, we see this equity distribution graph. You can full screen this to get a better look at it. This is a good way to quickly visualize the nut and range advantages. So this green line is hijack and this blue line is big blind. And you can change the color of these lines in your settings. But what we notice here is that hijack is way ahead of big blind. And this indicates that they have a big, big range advantage. When I stop at any one of these spots, so for example, right here, we can see on the x-axis, the strength of our hand within our own range, and on the y-axis, the strength of our hand against our opponent's range. So for example, right in the middle, hijack's middling hand is queen-jack offsuit, which has decent equity against big blind. Big blind's middling hand is jack-9, which is pretty far behind. And by superimposing them like this, we can get a quick view of what's going on. You can also highlight to zoom in. So for example, if we just want to see like the range advent or like the, the nutty hands, we can do that as well. And clicking anything in here, it's little dots that show which hands you've selected. So if we just select these nutted hands, each one of these dots represents a combination in either player's range. Now the ranges tab is most powerful because you can use it to compare the range asymmetries and from there you can use it to figure out why different strategies are preferred. So something else you guys should check out is this breakdown tab. Now the breakdown tab shows you a summary of all the hand classes in your player's range. So here we're looking at big blind and this is similar to the filters tab except we have more graphs and stuff, right? So here we can see how many of each of these hand categories, straight, sets, two pair, different types of draws and such, are in our range. And that's shown under this range percentage here. We can see the number of combinations present, as well as what these hand categories prefer. So we can see, obviously, straights, like the raise a lot, and hands like low pairs are just pure folding. We can also apply betting filters. So I, if I just select these raise sizes, notice that this represented column changes. And so this shows me the overall range construction of our check race. And we can see, again, our check race is mostly constructed using hands like straights and sets and two pair and such, right? This is going to be the, the value portion of our race. And the bluffs, lots of combo draws, right? At the bottom of the page, we see this all combo summary. And this is uh, kind of a fun way to visualize the polarity. So... Here we can see what hands start folding, what hands are calling, what hands are raising in this beautiful little Manhattan graph. And it's interesting because it's sorted by equity. So we can see that, for example, some high equity hands, for example, ace-eight here, 
is actually folding. And you know what? I'm going to change this from strategy to all. And so this hand has 53% equity. And yet some low equity hands, so for example, king six here, this hand has way less equity, but it's pure raising. And that's likely because you have the king of diamonds, and so you can outdraw your opponent's range, whereas a6 is going to be dominated by a lot of hijacks, right? We can also visualize the polarity. Notice that there's a lot of red here. That's our value. And there are some bluffs along here, right? And the more polar you get, the more of that spread, and the fewer of these middling hands will be present. So it'll spread out between value and bluffs in the aggressive lines. We also have aggregate reports. Now, I've already put out a video on aggregate reports. These are so cool. These allow you to view the strategy across all possible flops. You can use it to find, for example, betting heuristics. Uh, you can group, you can filter. I'm not going to go into it in this one because I've just put out a video on it, but do check that out. These are very, very powerful tools to get a better sense of what's going on and build heuristics. Let's go back for a second. One hockey you should be aware of is that you can quickly switch between these four tabs using one, two, three, and four. And again, all of the hotkeys are in your settings here. So all right here, if you forget, some of them are customizable as well. Something else I should mention is that you can filter by suits. So for example, right here, I can filter by suit. I could filter for just the diamond draws, for example, or just the backdoor spades. I can also do that in the filters tab as well. A few more shortcuts you should be aware of. Uh, you can reset the history by pressing this button. And that's just going to take you back there or press G. You can save the solution. So if you find a spot you like, press this save button. Type in some notes. Spot to study. Save it. And you could come back to it later. And this is a great way for, for example, if you're a coach, you can save your spots like this. Uh, reopen it that way. We can also edit and reapply it. You can jump directly to practice mode, pressing this button, and that's going to allow you to grind whatever spot you're looking at to practice against the solution. And this allows you to collapse and expand this spot for smaller screens. So that's mostly it for the solution browser. Now that you understand how to use it, let's move on to some tips. Now that you've learned all of the features in the solution browser, I'm going to give you guys some tips and tricks for studying GTO solutions more effectively. Now, if you've seen my efficient studying video, you'll know that I promote a big picture approach. A lot of people, when they go into solutions, they're trying to memorize stuff and they get overwhelmed by all the possibilities. And the thing is, you shouldn't be trying to memorize arbitrary frequencies. You should be looking for the bigger picture. So focusing on your range rather than your hand, looking at thresholds, comparing the range asymmetries, comparing solutions, and overall just trying to uncover these underlying principles that actually drive your strategy. That's my approach. Not to say that memorizing is particularly wrong, it's just limited in how much you can actually do, right? There's too many spots. So without further ado, let's move on to the first tip. So my next tip is to try and uncover underlying principles. The purpose of studying GTO, in my opinion, is to uncover the underlying cause-effect relationships that drive good strategy. Let me say that one more time because it's really important. We want to figure out why rather than what. We want to know the reason behind betting this hand rather than this hand is betting, if that makes sense. And so solution browsers and GTO, they give us the answer, but they don't really tell us why. And uncovering why is important because once you know why, you can then apply it to a much wider range of situations. You can take that same principle and apply it to boards that you're unfamiliar with. And this helps you hone your strategy faster and more effectively. My next tip is to study thresholds. Now, I have talked about thresholds in so many videos, efficient studying, uh, 10 tips for newer poker players, as well as a bunch of articles at Daily Doses. But it's just such a low-hanging fruit that you really should be aware of. So studying thresholds is the art of asking questions that shape your range. So for example, where's the bottom of my range? Where's my continuation threshold? And once you know where your continuation threshold is, you know what's close, and you know what's a snap fold, and what's always continuing. 
right? So if you know that second pair is never folding, then you know that top pair is never folding, for example, right? And so studying these thresholds involves asking questions like, what hand classes start folding against this bet size? What hands can raise for value or double barrel for value? And what draws are just never folding here? So I won't go too much in depth because I've covered this in so many videos, but let me just give you a quick example of how I like to study thresholds. So this time I'm using a spin and go solution. Again, these principles apply to all formats. It doesn't matter what you play, cash, MTT, spins, this is going to apply to you. So button folds, small blind opens, big blind calls, and the flop is jack, eighth, deuce, two-tone. Small blind bets 25%, action on big blind. Now, when some people look at this, they're going to be a little bit confused because there's so many hands doing so many things, what's going on? So what I do is I click this filters tab. And first thing I look at are these thresholds here. So where is my indifference threshold for folding? Well, it's about ace high, right? And how do I know that? Because there's a little bit of blue there. And so if I simply filter for everything above ace high, we can see it's never folding. And so I already know that against this size, I'm not going to be folding a mate hand, right? Similarly with my draws, I'm not folding a draw here. What about my value threshold? Well, we can hover over this little icon, and would you look at that, our value threshold is top pair, and so we know approximately what hands are raising for value, where the continuation lines are, and this is important because it sculpts your strategy. So my next tip is to look beyond the strategy. Most people when they study GTO solutions are only paying attention to the strategy, and it's sometimes difficult to determine why it's doing what it's doing if you only look at the strategy. As we've shown earlier, there are a lot of other metrics you can use. You can look at EV, expected value, equity realization, blockers. We can try and find indifference thresholds. We can look at pot odds. There's a lot of different metrics you can look at, and strategy is only one of them. So make sure to utilize the tools GTO Wizard has to offer to help you understand what's going on. Let me show you an example. So this time I've selected an NL50 cash game, 100 big blinds deep. Cutoff opens, small blind three bets to 10, actions on us back in the cutoff. Here we can see it's folding 63% of the time. And now let's compare this to a different solution. And so this one uses a slightly larger GTO optimized three bet size, so small blind three bets to 11.5 instead. Now notice, what happens to our overall defending frequency when we switch between these two? It's a huge difference, right? And so people will then post in the Discord, well, why is it so much different? Aren't these two sizes basically the same? But the answer is no, they're not, because most of your hands are very close to zero EV. And so if you only look at the strategy, this may seem confusing, but let's take a look at the expected value of the overall range. And we can see that Basically, regardless of what size they bet, only the very top of your range has any real value. Most of the rest of it is just mixed in different bluff catchers to prevent small blind from exploiting you. And so if we look at strategy plus EV, we'll notice that all of these hands are very close to zero. And if you calculate your pot odds facing these two different raise sizes, 11.5 versus 10, you'll note that there is actually a fairly, I won't say huge, but at least a significant difference between your pot odds facing these two sizes. And so we can see with the EV metric alone that most of the range is already very close. So this is what I mean when I say utilize more than just the strategy tab. There's a whole lot more going on in here that you can get into that can be very helpful to understand what's going on. So my next tip is to clump by hand class. So this process involves using filters to look at one set of hand classes at a time and comparing and contrasting the strategies. In this way, we can try to find why certain things are happening, and we can also change the board in the runouts to see how the strategy with that hand class changes. This is a nice, powerful tool we can use to get insight into what's going on. Let me show you how this works. So we've got another cash game spot here. Cutoff opens. Big blind calls, and the flop is ace five five rainbow. So let's take a look at one specific type of hand. And I'm going to choose the under pairs because they're kind of nice to look at. And so, what's the difference between these hands, right? 
they're always going to be between top pair and trips, but we notice that kings is checking a lot, whereas six are betting more often. So why is it that the lower under pairs are betting more often than the higher under pairs? And hopefully this should be obvious to some of you guys, the answer is simply vulnerability. So, for example, when you bet pocket sixes, you're making them fold 7x, 8x, 9x, 10x, jack x. Uh, but when you bet pocket kings, I mean, are you really, did you gain much when you made them fold their jack eight? No, they, you could have just checked it back, let them hit a jack on the turn, and gotten money that way. And so there's value to fold equity, but it's relative to your hand. And this is something I talked about in my first lecture for Wizard, the value of fold equity. Now let's change the board and see if this heuristic still applies. So let's try ace 4-4, four, four, and we're going to take a look at the under pairs, and lo and behold, it's still there, right? The kings are checking more than the fives, and we see a nice gradient here. Okay, well, let's change it up a bit. What about ace 3-3? Three, three? And again, filter for under pairs, same heuristic, right? You see this actually in quite a lot of boards. Uh, so let's try something else. Let's try checking through to the turn. And we're going to pick, let's say, a six. And in fact, I'm going to make it a six of hearts, just because I want it to be rainbow. And I'm going to make it vertical view. Big blind checks, action on, cut off. So let's pick another hand class to study. Let's go with top here this time. How does our betting frequency with top pair change on different turn cards? So there's a few ways we can go about this. You could just pick different turn cards. You could look for ports. Another cool feature is you can use hotkeys. So I'm going to click shift left and notice that this increments the turn card. So it's seven, it's an eight, it's a nine, it's a 10. And notice what's happening to our top pair here. It's starting to bet more and more and more. Why is that? Why do we get to bet more top pair? when, for example, there's a queen on board. And so this is where you start making your hypothesis. Now, my hypothesis is that we have enough of these queen X hands that they act as protection for the worst bluff catchers in our range that want to get the showdown. And so that frees up our top pair to bet more aggressively. Whereas if we compare this to say, like six of hearts, for example, we can't really do that as much, right? And so in this case, I think that you can scroll through the strategy or use turn reports to try and compare how different runouts affect different portions of your range. So my last tip is also my best tip. If you stuck around this far, congratulations, you get the little pot of gold at the end of the tunnel. And that tip is to compare the ranges. And this is just so absurdly powerful. People are not using the ranges tab enough. Uh, the range asymmetries reveal most of the reasons behind the strategies. This is because you can, pair, you can compare things like which hand class is hit, who has more of what, what are, what's the polarity by looking at the equity buckets. And let me show you just a quick exercise you can do to try and hone in on your flop heuristics a bit. So I've picked a spin and go spot here. We're going to keep it simple. Button opens, big blind calls, and instead of picking a flop, I'm going to go straight to the ranges tab, and we're going to filter for calls. So now we see what hands big blind is calling with. So let's try and pick a flop where button's going to have an advantage. So for example, what does big blind not have? Well, they don't have any of the pocket pairs. We're going to look at the offsuit stuff, like they don't have jack 3, they don't have like 10, 5, 9, 5. So, what about a board like 9, 5, deuce? Something like that. So, they don't have any of these sets, obviously. And they don't have 9, 5, or 5, deuce, or 9, deuce. And so, they, they don't have a lot of these two pair, any of the sets. Uh, whereas, we're still hitting all of this top pair. And we still have all of these over pairs. So I fear, yeah, I feel like 9-5 deuce is going to be a very aggressively bet board, just looking at the range comparison tab here. So let's plug it in. So big blind calls, 9-5 deuce. Big blind checks, action on button, 
and wowzers that is a lot of big betting for a spin and go so yeah just betting pot 75 percent betting often and betting large uh taking advantage of the fact that a big blind just doesn't have any of the nutted hands in range to counter these large bets and also taking advantage of the fact that we can immediately fold out a lot of overcards to our top pair such as all of these jack 10 king queen ace cards right and so this is the power of the range comparison tab use it to compare hand classes use it to compare equity buckets like here we can see for example they just don't have any of these best hands in range because we cherry picked this spot and that's obviously going to lead to these more polarized strategies especially on a board with as much fold equity as 95 deuce all right that's it for the video guys i hope you enjoyed it hope you got something out of it if you find this helpful hit that subscribe button hit the bell and let us know what you'd like to see next in the comments down below happy grinding